2015's Distinct Deluxe Edition video game review. So you, right, a game I absolutely love, and anything critical I say in this video is not out of bitterness, no one forced me to play it or to do this vlog about it. And yes, I will be compared, you know, I'll, I'll judge it based on when it came out. So you play as Price, a man seizing property out of ambition to work for a company. And the game is brutally honest about the consequences of property seizure. It really brings to mind how awful landlords are. If you're not really convinced that they are awful, Thought Slime and the Cavernacle have done some videos that if they don't convince you, nothing will. And yeah, the game does a really solid job underlining some of the things that are wrong with these practices. And yeah, the, the message comes across as what the developer actually feels rather than just populism attempting to sell since it, it's an independent developer. In fact, the entire game was made by just one person. Probably going to butcher this. Jesse McConan. And... Let's see. Yeah, th this is what he actually believes, and he has the courage to put a message out there that a number of people won't agree with to the point where it might hurt sales, which is obviously a really big deal for an indie developer. You know, if you're. It's important for everyone, but if you are a massive company making tons of games, you know, even if not all of them do equally well, you might still be okay. Price may be poor, but so are the people he's seizing the property of. He could help them instead in a way that helps him too. The art style is quite interesting. The big heads allowing for very expressive faces since the emotion is conveyed through that. There is no voice acting. All the dialogue is text that you read yourself. And I quite appreciate it. I've, I've seen a couple of cases where they don't do this. In this game, whenever yeah every every single bit of text that you know is is color coded so you can always tell who is speaking which is obviously extremely important for the emotional impact i have not seen very many survival horror games where you can see much less clearly read how the protagonist player character feels when being scared on his face during the gameplay and most they'll cut to a cutscene and well that signals that the player to the player that nothing's going to happen until the cutscene is over you know there there are some where you can see the face you know nocturne it's been a long time since i played but i did play resident evil 2 um that one also has a camera where you can sometimes see from what i recall certainly nocturne like nocturne makes the decision to cover the eyes entirely with these like big goggle kind of thing you know you can't or am i misremembering it's been a while anyway you can't really read the stranger's face the guy you play as in nocturne and i don't think resident evil 2 i mean certainly the the faces back then couldn't quite be as expressive i love a lot of games from that time i love the you know early silent hill games and i there's a lot to love about Resident Evil 2. But yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, so back to this game. The tone is quite dark with occasional morbid jokes that really underline, again, the, the terrible practices. And there are these flashes of brutal, gory, bloody violence. You know, it's not quite as... Um, there's not quite as much of it as some other horror games. The game reminded me somewhat of Silent Hill without the combat element. Shorter and not quite as extreme, though still very extreme. Like, if you... This is one of those things where the gore is so intense. If you at all have to think about, is this too gory for me? The answer is almost definitely yes. And... But, but yeah, um... There's even a couple of things that really felt like, okay, this is, like, the element in District 1 is right out of this other, of, of this Silent Hill game, which was quite cool. It, it doesn't feel like a ripoff at all. 
and um, it becomes clear almost immediately that what you're seeing can't possibly be literally happening. It's how it's being perceived by Price, warped by his immense guilt, which also, you know, the entire game is being, the, the story is being told to, to someone. I won't give away exactly who. It is revealed before the, the game is over. But yeah, the storyteller is Price and that bit of framing does explain why, you know, basically when he did these things, he maybe felt bad, but it didn't quite look and sound the way it does in the game. That is him reflecting on, you know, yeah, how how bad, yeah, how bad it, what he was doing was and how guilty it made him feel. The game is technically, at least according to, to to Steam, it is technically point and click, which I've never seen done with this, but yeah. Um, the character is controlled with WSAD, no mouse control, and it's side-scrolling. And this does, of course, limit how many things you can interact with and how. In addition to the use function, there is also an inventory. Inventory? Inventory? I can never remember how you're supposed to pronounce that word. And you can select an item from that, try to use it on static objects. You know, for me, the gold standard of point-and-click puzzlers have has always been the Curse of Monkey Island. I can imagine it's also in the first two, but I haven't played those yet. But the, the, the Curse of Monkey Island, you know, you, you, yeah, you point your mouse to a thing, and then, you know, I, f I forget if you're supposed to hold it down or just click, but then, you know, you, you have an option to interact with your hand, with your mouth, with your eyes. And through this, obviously, like, if you're just gonna try to click on everything that means it's going to take significantly longer like that where you know if, if, I don't know if it's the norm but evidently several games today that are point and click do this where you just you click on the thing to interact you can't do you know there, there, there's also the inventory but other than that you know you know, so far I've seen, other than this game, I've seen it in Adios and Rusty Lake Hotel, all three being recent games. The music in the, this game is quite effective. Every so often the game takes complete control of the light and what you can see. And let's see. Yeah, I will definitely say the side scrolling helps make sure that you're looking at the right thing. There have been times in other horror games, especially survival horror games, where I was looking in one direction, something happened in another direction, and thus the scare didn't work as well. And and I found it more annoying in some of the, like, I, I am a broken record, but I do find it annoying in Amnesia the Dark Descent. Overall a great game, when, yeah, some of the time it'll take control over, you know, yeah, how you how fast you're moving and how the the view works, and sometimes this happens very early on before there's actually any danger. And I realize it's supposed to be setting up. This is a scary game. I think they could have done it without. You know, it it doesn't it works well on the first play, but that's a game I've replayed. I don't know five times or something, and on replay it really. Yeah, takes a lot out of it, which I really don't feel is the case with Amnesia Machine for Pigs or the three Penumbra games. But but yeah, I I really liked the way that it controlled what you see. That worked extremely well, and you know, obviously when there isn't a combat element, you know, the, there if you're going to scare the player, you need to have something very like distinct it, it the game has a very creepy atmosphere throughout but if that was all it had then it couldn't really escalate and the escalation is usually these these flashes of, of gore and violence and yeah the game you know like normally you can make out what happens across the entire screen 
every so often a lot of the light will go away sometimes you can only see price himself you know and i think that is oh, right right the the puzzles there was one that really frustrated me but other than that yeah they're they're quite well designed there is pretty good logic to them and you know some of the ones that really need to to have in-game hints yeah there there are hints you know the yeah if if you've played a number of other the, the, uh, right i suppose i yes this is one of the point and click games where when you click on something if it isn't the thing that you need to be doing the the character will say something that will help you figure out what is the you know he'll he'll say you know i can't do anything about this right now but i can't help but notice and then he'll describe the thing that he's trying to interact with and you'll get like a hint you know to you know maybe maybe this is yeah, it's not right now, or it's not empty-handed, or it's not with the object you're currently trying to use on it. But there might be something here. And, right, I've seen some say that, you know, oh, the characters are, are very one-note and such. I can't really argue with that. I just think that it works. I don't think that it's wrong for morality plays, which this very much is, and that's clear from, from the very start. I don't think it's wrong for them to have more or less one note characters also keep in mind it's you know the game's like two hours with the amount of characters that there are there wouldn't really have been room for much more depth and I think Jesse made the right choice here and let's see the right I appreciate that the controls are very straightforward you know yeah, WSAD and the the actually yeah in the game itself it's really just W and D you're you're just walking side to side and then E the the use and and space for accessing the inventory I'm gonna try to say it each different way so that at least one of them will be right and that is right and I also I appreciate the inventory is quite straightforward to use. I'm I'm not sure that I've seen ones where that wasn't the case, but given that you don't use the mouse, you know, you, you can use the mouse in the menu, but other than that, it's all W S A D. That that's where you use W and S in the in the menus. But yeah, um basically the the if you want to use a thing, you just have to select it in the inventory and then, you know, yeah, go to the thing that you want to and then click use. If you're scrolling through the inventory, hold down space and press E until you reach the, the item. And it's, I, I don't think there's, there's not a huge amount of, of spaces, so you won't spend forever scrolling through. The game is linear, which, you know, not every point and click is. I mentioned Curse of Monkey Island, there's hub areas in that one. Not particularly the case here. And yeah, the, there are a number of cutscenes. They are largely short, a few of them are slightly interactive. And yeah, you know, it's. I appreciate with how much dialogue there is overall, you know, yeah, I'll, I feel like Jesse did a good job of spreading it out. You know, there's no, there's not really any time in this where you just sit forever and just people talk at you. That's another thing, there is no, um, there's no dialogue tree here. You can only say the, yeah, the, the one thing that the situation allows for now the yes yeah, so the graphics are fairly um, fairly simple it's also worth noting it's it's pixel graphics but 
they're yeah they're they're good and not just for you know the the limitations and the audio is great there's some really great sound design and the game is challenging there's you know again especially one puzzle but let's see yeah and there's a decent amount of achievements i would not really say it has a lot of replayability you know basically once you there, there's only the one way to go through everything and given that there's not stuff like combat you know yeah like at the end of the day there isn't really anything and and just you know um let's see by now it's been weeks i guess a month or more um dear esther also has wsid that one is first person and not really not quite linear like you can or i suppose it's more that you can yeah you can you can go in a lot of different directions you can go almost anywhere that the the map levels allow you for and yeah you know because of that you might that one has slightly more replayability i did not run into any bugs or glitches and the, yeah over the course of the game you go to multiple different you know you're you're usually you're you're seizing the the home of someone and yeah you go to different places different people's homes and they do a good job of making of keeping it varied there are multiple places where you're moving around basically like an apartment building but the you know there's one person that you're seizing the property of who lives in the woods so that brings more variety there and yeah and the level design is quite good you get a sense of how these people live before you seize their property and yeah the puzzle design there is the limitation that you're basically you know you're walking you you interact in the one way or with the you know yeah the items you pick up and and that's basically it i that is one place where you can kind of see the the limitations again i'm not trying to like crap all over you know he clearly put a lot of effort into this i i feel like i've heard that this is not the only game that jesse has made i feel like i've heard that at least one of the other games he's made after the ones he's made after this there is slightly more variety to puzzle designs and i will say they are about as varied as they could be considering the limitations there's a couple of timed puzzles where you're you know yeah and that right um so i already mentioned that it's point and click and dark humor some of the other user defined tags for this on steam include psychological horror story rich atmospheric and narration and the um, there are some some quite good ah, stills on the the steam store and it actually i i swear i'm not planning these based on this yeah happens to be on sale right now actually on steam uh, offer ends 29th of January so I'm not telling you you have to get it I'm just saying I was extremely happy that I did and let's see the <laughs> yeah and and if you scroll down to about this game it actually price is saying I'm on sale going cheap like always story of my life uh, right right um so Jesse is, I believe, from Finland. There is a little bit, yes, developer from Finland. There is a little bit of stuff where you can kind of see, okay, this English is not his first language. It didn't distract me. Um, I, I don't think I found more than two. And, you know, there's like probably a hundred lines of dialogue in this. 
Now, the um, so I have only played the deluxe edition, so I'll just briefly read what Jesse himself wrote. I'm pretty sure this was written by Jesse. Anyway, uh, the deluxe edition. Distraint has been doing quite well thanks to the awesome community. Deluxe is my thanks to... Okay, yeah, it was written by him. Take a look at what's new. Dynamic Calling, Goodbye Gray, Hello Color. That is a really excellent edition. If you haven't played the deluxe edition yet, if you've only played the original, I could imagine the, the color would be worth getting the deluxe edition, at least on sale. You know, because I will definitely say the color added um, a lot. And I can totally imagine how, you know, yeah, early on it was like, we got to go gray. There's only so much, yeah. No more lantern, increased environmental lighting. Again, really, really helps a lot. Enhanced animation, graphics, lighting effects, refined audio for better atmosphere, improved user interface. So these are all, it's, I haven't played the original. I, I, it, the original does come with if you if you get the or at least cer certainly some versions probably all versions. Um, I have this through GOG.com, but it's, yeah, I can absolutely imagine how those limitations were there at the yeah in the original version. And this is a huge like occasionally when someone makes like a special edition of something, it's actually not quite better. It's just like more or more expensive but this appears to very much be a case yeah uh, currently this is the only Jesse McConan game that I own but I'm gonna read reviews of the other ones and see if they aren't because I did notice this is not the only one that's on sale right now so yeah um, I think that is everything um, let's see. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I, I gotta say, I really, I would never have thought that Side Scroller, which I've played a lot of, and Point and Click would go together so well, but, yeah. Can't argue with success.